Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to Sandhya News Line. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 14th of October. Postpaid mobile phone services restored in India's Kashmir without internet. Residents suffer due to poor healthcare facilities in Gilgit, Baltistan. A Nepal China Inc. 18 agreements during Xi's historic visit to Kathmandu. And now for all the details, authorities in India's northern German Kashmir on Monday restored post-paid mobile services on all networks over 70 days after the mobile and internet communications were blocked in the Kashmir Valley. Internet connectivity, however, remains suspended for now. Postpaid mobile services on all networks were restored on Monday, 72 days after the mobile and internet communications were blocked in the Kashmir Valley by the government. The restoration of mobile phone connections comes over two months after the government ended Jammu and Kashmir's special status on August 5th and split it into two union territories. Internet connectivity, however, remains suspended for now. क्योंकि हमारे जो ब्रदर्स बाहर थे फॉरेन मुल्कों में या इस कश्मीर के बाहर थे उनसे कोई رابطہ नहीं है क्योंकि यहां हमारे आसपास की जो हमारे पड़ोसी थे उनसे हमारा رابطہ नहीं है क्योंकि फोन के बिना हम अधूरे थे वी वेलकम दिस नो मूव ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट बट इन द मीन टाइम द गवर्नमेंट शुड आल्सो रिस्टोर ऑल यू नो सेलुलर सर्विसेज एंड ब्रॉडबैंड कनेक्शंस बिकॉज़ पीपल आर नॉट एबल टू कम्युनिकेट विद ईच अदर Jammu and Kashmir's administration had last week withdrawn the security advisory preventing tourists from visiting the state. It also offered necessary support and assistance to tourists visiting the region. King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands were accorded a ceremonial welcome at the Presidential Palace in New Delhi on Monday. The royal couple, who is on a six-day visit to India, held meetings with top Indian leadership, including President Ram Nath Kavind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, to boost bilateral ties. King of the Netherlands Willem Alexander was accorded a ceremonial welcome in New Delhi on Monday. Willem Alexander accompanied by his wife Queen Maxima was received by Indian President Ram Nath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi upon their arrival at the Rashtrapati Bhavan or the Presidential Palace where the king inspected the guard of honor. The royal couple is on a 6-day visit to the country to further build upon the strong Indo-Dutch strategic partnership. We're very glad to be back. Uh last state visit 2007, uh which we joined my mother and so much has changed in India and we're very grateful to be able to have another opportunity to see India in its new form in a newly developed world and uh, to enhance the bilateral relations between the Netherlands and India. The king and the queen of the Netherlands later held separate meetings with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Foreign Minister S J Shankar aimed at boosting bilateral relations between the two countries. Netherlands, one of India's top 10 trading partners, is a major investor in the country in sectors like technology, energy, logistics, financial services and transport. The trade between the two countries has continued to grow steadily. India's national security adviser Ajit Doval on Monday slammed Pakistan for providing a safe breeding ground for terrorists and using terrorism as an instrument of state policy. India's national security adviser Ajit Doval on Monday slammed Pakistan for providing a safe breeding ground for terrorists and using terrorism as an instrument of state policy. Doval was speaking at the two-day National Investigation Agency's National Conference of Chief of Anti-Terrorism Squad and Special Task Force in capital New Delhi. The National Security Adviser said terrorists can be defeated by finding out answers to questions about their background, source of funds, weapons, and if they are being supported by other countries. But if a criminal 
has got the support of the state. Say, if in some place the police is supporting an underworld man, how difficult it becomes to handle him. It becomes a very great challenge. Or somebody powerful is supporting him. When some powerful people start supporting a state starts supporting the criminals and some of the states have mastered their, uh, their this thing in that. And here, in our case, the Pakistan has made it as a part of its, uh, as an instrument of state policy. Dowal said the Financial Action Task Force or FATF action against Pakistan has put the South Asian country under pressure as far as action against the terrorism was concerned. The anti-terror agency began a six-day session in Paris on Sunday to decide whether to retain Pakistan in a list of countries with inadequate controls over terrorism financing. Moving on, quality health care is not just bedrock of a healthy society, but also an indispensable component in the growth of a country or region. But unfortunately, Gilgit Baltistan, a territory under Pakistan's illegal occupation, has been neglected like anything by successive stooge governments working at Islamabad's behest. Empty beds, silent corridors and locked rooms speak volumes about the state of healthcare sector in Giza district of illegally occupied Gilgit Baltistan region. Locals say there is an acute shortage of doctors to look after the health of two and a half lakh population of the district. But the government of the region that largely operates at the instructions of Islamabad is making no serious attempts to improve the situation, leaving them to suffer. कोई डॉक्टर यहीं पे नहीं है 10 बजे के तकरीबन 9 बजे के टाइम है यहां पे कोई डॉक्टर यहां पे मौजूद नहीं है हफीज साहब की गवर्नमेंट तो सिर्फ ठेके के पीछे लगी हुई है यहां पे ठेके कर रही है और यहां पे डायलॉग के आबादी के पीछे यहां उसको कोई गरज नहीं है कितने यहां पे हमने खुद देखा है ऐसे मरीज यहां से गिलगित पहुंचने में तकरीबन 2.5 घंटे का सफर लगता है वहां रास्ते में उनकी डेथ हो गई उनको वापस लेके आ गए हैं ये यहां पे सुतेली मां से भी पत्थर सलूक किया जा रहा है both hospitals and dispensaries across the region are of negligible benefit to the locals. Successive governments in Gilgit, Baltistan have only passed the ball from one court to another and have done nothing that can benefit the locals even a bit, forcing them to keep on suffering at the hands of the corrupt administration. The United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan has urged the Afghan government and electoral bodies complete the process for the recently held presidential election in the country on time. The statement came at a time when the poll bodies are being criticized by election observers over failure to accelerate the process. The United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, or UNEMA, has urged the Afghan government and electoral bodies to safeguard and complete the process for the recently held presidential election in the country. UNEMA issuing a statement on Sunday said Afghan citizens braved security threats to cast their votes for a better future and that they deserve to be commended for carrying out their civic duty. The UN has also urged the two election bodies of Afghanistan, the Independent Election Commission, the Electoral Complaints Commission, to ensure all stakeholders understand the vote tally process. The statement came at a time when both the election bodies are being criticized by election observers over failure to accelerate the poll process. The deadline for determining the preliminary results of the presidential poll is October 19th. Chinese President Xi Jinping concluded his two-day state visit to Nepal on Sunday with both sides signing over 18 agreements. She also held a number of meetings with top Nepali leadership to boost bilateral ties. Nepal and China on Sunday inked 18 agreements and two letters of understanding during Chinese President Xi Jinping's stopover state visit to Kathmandu. She held a bilateral meeting with Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, where both the leaders discussed the entire gamut of relations, after which both the sides exchanged their agreements. The ink documents between the two nations focus on promoting bilateral cooperation in multiple fields, including physical infrastructure development, railroad connectivity and investment. The Chinese president earlier on Sunday also met former Nepalese Prime Ministers and leaders of ruling Nepal Communist Party. During his two-day state visit to Nepal, she also attended a top delegation-level meeting in presence of Nepalese President Bidyadevi Bhandari. 
Nepal was the second and the last stop of the Chinese leader's South Asia tour, which also included India. Xi's trip to the region was aimed at discussing trade, infrastructure and regional foreign policy issues. Sri Lanka's presidential front-runner housing minister Sajid Premadasa has said he is not against the death penalty for drug kingpins who continue to conduct their businesses even from prison cells. The island nation in recent months launched a severe crackdown on the illegal drug trade after thousands allegedly became addicts. Sajid Premadasa, the Sri Lankan presidential candidate of New Democratic Front led by the United National Party, said he is not against the death penalty for drug kingpins who continue to conduct their businesses even from prison cells. Speaking at an event in Colombo over the weekend, Premadasa said the proliferation of drug usage is one of the main challenges the society faces and prison sentences do not make the drug traffickers to stop their trade. He, however, said it has to be ensured that the judicial processes that are in place for administration of justice are transparent, fair and free from any interference. Earlier in July, Sri Lankan President Maitri Pala Sirisena said his government would go ahead with the death penalty on serious drug offenders, ending a near half-century moratorium on capital punishment. The international community, including human rights groups, have raised concerns over Sirisena's decision. Sri Lanka has in recent months launched a severe crackdown on the illegal drug trade, with several drug lords and smugglers taken into custody after over 300,000 people in the country allegedly became addicts. Hundreds of people dressed in colourful attires took part in a traditional boat race organised in Bangladesh's Bariganga River recently to celebrate the country's founding father Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's birth centenary falling next year. The participants rowed their decorated boats in maximum speed, showcasing their skills. They also carried banners and placards of the late leader and his daughter, incumbent Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The Bangladeshi government has already started preparing to celebrate the centenary of Rahman's birth with year-long programs across the country and abroad. The leader, who was born in March 1920, had spearheaded Bangladesh Freedom Movement, which led to its independence in 1971. Mural artists recently came together to create around 120 Rangoli decorations at an exhibition in India's western Rajkot city ahead of the Hindu festival of Diwali. The art form holds special significance on religious occasions. Mural artists recently came together in India's western Rajkot city to showcase their talent at an exhibition representing the culture and tradition of the country through art ahead of Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights. As many as 120 Rangoli decorations were made on floor depicting Hindu deities, nature and human figures among others by the participants ranging from 3 years to 51 years of age. A total of 60 artists participated in the exhibition. थ्री इयर्स से लेके 51 ईयर के सभी अलग अलग स्टूडेंट हैं और उन स्टूडेंटों ने सभी ने दो दो रंगोली बनाई है यानी कि 120 रंगोली यहां पर हुई है उसमें सभी तरह के अलग अलग रंगोलियां हैं मॉडर्न बीइंग एन आर्ट फॉर्म रंगोली मेकिंग होल्ड स्पेशल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑन रिलीजियस ओकेशंस इन इंडिया women especially in southern and western india make colorful murals during festivals prayer rituals and weddings the murals are usually made in temples and at the entrance or in the courtyard of the house well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Postpaid mobile phone services restored in India's Kashmir without internet. Residents suffer due to poor healthcare facilities in Gilgit, Baltistan. A Nepal China Inc. 18 agreements during Xi's historic visit to Kathmandu. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.